93 FM 92.7. Also, we're live in Parliament shortly to hear exactly what the Speaker uh, will be saying and matters arising with respect to the petition for him to declare some four seats vacant because those MPs are either going independent or have decided to contest on the ticket of a political party. We have updates on that here on Hot Edition on 3FM 92.7. Also this evening on your election command center, the Electoral Commission says it will declare presidential election results for each region before announcing the national verdict for the December 7 presidential elections we've got some reactions for you on this matter here on hot edition on 3fm 92.7 as always we're very very interactive share your thoughts views comments and opinions read out to you and to the rest of the world and Safwa Wahene is here with a summary of the news Safwa. thank you alfred and welcome to the new summary segment now to the details speaker of parliament alban bagwen is poised to deliver his ruling today on a petition submitted by the minority which seeks to declare the seats of four current members of parliament vacant in accordance with article 97 of the 1992 constitution the minorities petition target suhum mp kujo asante formina mp andrew isiama agna west mp cynthia morrison and amemfi central mp kwachi akwa for removal the national democratic congress ndc has vowed to overturn the electoral commission's disqualification of the amemfi central candidate joanna john kujo a move it has described as baseless and unconstitutional Constitutional. According to the NDC, it has secured an interlocutory injunction to bar the EC from printing ballots for the parliamentary race in that constitution. In that constituency, I beg your pardon. Also, a lawyer for plaintiff in the anti LGBTQ case, Richard Delasky, has debunked assertions that they are responsible for delays in the hearing of the case. Earlier, the judiciary issued a statement noting the failure of parties involved in the case to file their processes occasioned the delays. The conditions of service implementation for over 145,000 nurses and midwives have been suspended indefinitely. The suspension follows a court injunction by an aggrieved section of the nurses and midwives who criticize the leadership of the Ghana Registered Nurses and Midwives Association, GRNMA, of not involving them in the signed agreement and to our last story the university teachers association of ghana utah has intensified its industrial action which began on october 10 in protest against the rampant illegal mining activities also known as galamse that threatened water bodies forest reserves and farmlands in a recent meeting on october 16 the National Executive Council, NEC, reviewed the situation and called for urgent government intervention to address the present environmental crisis. And this brings us to the end of our new summary segment. And over to you, Alfred. So far, thank you so much. And this morning is on 3news.com. Make some time and visit 3news.com. This is Hot Edition on 3 FM 92.7. Also live on Kiss Me 107.1 in Tamale and Beyond. Also on W93.5 in Wa and Beyond. Let's get into the details of the story now. And Speaker of Parliament, Alban Sumana is for Bagwen. It's this evening poised to deliver his ruling on a petition submitted by the minority which seeks to declare the seats of four current members of parliament vacant in accordance with article 97 of the 1992 constitution the minority's petition targets suhum member of parliament kojo asante formina mp andre siama aguna west member of parliament cynthia morrison and a memphis central member of parliament Kwachi Aka for removal. Now, amongst these MPs, three have chosen to run as independent candidates in the upcoming December elections, while the former member of parliament who is currently serving as an independent candidate and also the second deputy speaker of this eighth parliament intends to contest on the ticket of the ruling new patriotic party. In a counteraction, majority leader Alexander Penyomakin has filed an injunction with the Supreme Court to prevent the speaker of parliament from declaring the seats vacant. U.S.-based Ghanaian lawyer Professor Kwiko Sari asserts that the mere filing of an injunction against parliament should not disrupt its functions, highlighting the importance of the separation of powers. And we're going to cross over shortly live to, to get, get you exactly what is happening in parliament and on the floor of parliament today. 
shortly. My colleague Noble Crosby um, is joining us in a bit. We'll have a conversation on the happenings in Parliament here on Hot Edition on 3FM 92.7. Remember, we're live on Cresme 107.1 in Tamale and beyond, and also on W93.5 in Wa and beyond. Let me give you an idea of the pro- proceedings in Parliament. Now we're crossing over live right now to Parliament. The Speaker of Parliament, Aban Sumana Kinsom Bagwen, is speaking. This switching or defection, therefore, can be seen as a breach of the mandate and social contract between the Member of Parliament and the electorate as it changes the political dynamics that the voters originally endorsed. The prohibition of defection, as reflected in Article 971G and H, serves several critical purposes in maintaining the integrity of parliament, parliamentarians, and protecting the trust and will of the people. The provisions of Article 971G and H are designed to safeguard the principles of party loyalty, voter representation, and political stability. The faction is prohibited because it undermines the trust placed in members of parliament by their constituents and can lead to instability in parliament. These constitutional safeguards ensure that members of parliament remain accountable to both their parties and the electorate, and they prevent members of parliament from engaging in behavior that could amount to fraud or disruptive of the functioning of parliament. Honorable members, it has been suggested by some members that the provisions of Article 971G and H which address the vacation of a member of parliament seat due to defection, should be understood prospectively. That is, they should apply only to future parliaments and not to the term of office of parliament when the act occurs. While this argument may appear to offer a practical approach, it must be firmly dismissed as both untenable and inconsistent with the constitutional purpose of these provisions. One may ask, what is Article 97 purposed to do? The clear intent of Article 97 1G and H, to my understanding, is to preserve party loyalty, engender trust, and protect the mandate of the voter and representation throughout the MP's term of office. These provisions are designed to prevent political instability, as I stated, opportunistic behavior, fraudulent representations, and disruption of parliamentary composition during the term of a parliament by ensuring that members of parliament remain faithful to the mandate given to them by the electorate at the time of their election. To understand these provisions as only applying prospectively meaning that they would take effect only in future parliaments, will nullify the purpose of Article 97. The provisions of Article 97 and the consideration are intended to address breaches of party loyalty and independent status as they occur during a term, ensuring that the House's composition remains consistent with the electoral outcomes. If Article 97 1G and H were to apply only in future parliaments, it will render these provisions effectively superfluous. By the time the next parliament is constituted, any member of parliament who has defected or sued political allegiance during the current parliament will no longer be in violation of the provision. They will start the next term aligned with their new party or as an independent there will exist no defection, and the violation will effectively be wiped clean at the start of the term of the succeeding parliament. If the understanding of the provisions was futuristic, members of parliament could freely switch parties, 
or become independent during the term of a parliament and pretend to be representing the interests of the people who elected him or her or the party on whose platform he or she wrote to parliament while paying loyalty to a different party or group of people with no immediate consequences. This is precisely what Article 97 G and H are meant to prevent. The provisions exist to curb, as I stated, defection, as it happens, not to offer a free pass to members of parliament to change allegiance during their term and only face no consequences, even in future electoral cycles. Under Article 97 of the Constitution of Ghana, there are indeed different modes through which a member of parliament shall vacate his or her seat, and these can be broadly categorized into two groups. The A is the one that we refer to as automatic or procedural, and the B is a matter of determination of fact. Certain modes of vacating a seat happen automatically or procedurally, either through the direct operation of law or institutional processes. These are relatively straightforward and do not require external determination of facts. For example, the dissolution of parliament, the election as speaker, the expulsion for contempt, and resignation of a member of parliament. The second category deals with others where you require determination of facts. And those are the other provisions identified in Articles 97.1, C, E, and D. These involve more complex factual situations that are less clear-cut and may be subject to dispute, making them matters that likely require determination to ascertain whether a vacancy has occurred. Honorable members, it is important to note that the determination of whether a member of parliament has resigned from their political party or has joined another party is a matter of fact. In 2020, during the tenure of Right Honorable Professor Aaron Michael Kui as Speaker of Parliament, a notable instance occurred when the New Patriotic Party notified the Speaker that the Member of Parliament for Formula, Honorable Andrews Asiema Amwako, was no longer a member of the party. The MPP requested that the seat be declared vacant in accordance with Article 97.1 of the Constitution, citing that the Member of Parliament had filed to contest the upcoming elections as an independent candidate, which violated the party's constitution. In response to this request and notification, Right Honorable Professor Aaron Michael Quay proceeded to declare the seat vacant. However, I must emphasize that this ruling made by the previous speaker does not bind other speakers, including myself. It is important to point out that in the present matter before the House, the notice of poll is available at the Electoral Commission on all the 275 constituencies. I have duly taken note of the notice of the poll, and further, more, no member in making comments to the statement made to the House by the minority leader denies these glaring and notorious facts. And so, what is my role in all this? Honorable members, it is important to point out that the Speaker is called upon by the standing orders of Parliament, particularly Order 18, to inform the House of the occurrence of a vacancy of the seat of a member under clause 1B to E, G, and H of Article 97 of the Constitution. Accordingly, I proceed to inform the House 
that by the notification of the polls, the following members of parliament have by their actions vacated their seats in parliament. The members are Honorable Peter Yao Kwachi Aka, NDC MP for Amenfi Central in the Western Region, now referred to as an independent parliamentary candidate for the same constituency. Two, Honorable Andrew Amwako Asiyama, independent member for former constituency in Ashanti Region, now referred to as MPP parliamentary candidate for the constituency. Three, Honorable Kojo Asante, MPP MP for Suhum in the Eastern Region, now referred to as independent candidate for the same constituency. And finally, Honorable Cynthia Mamile Morrison, MPP MP for Aguna West constituency in the Central Region, now referred to as independent candidate for the same constituency. These MPs cannot be allowed by law and my good self to continue to pretend to be representing people that they don't believe in and they don't have any loyalty for in this house any longer. The house is accordingly so informed. Honorable members, I thank you for your patience and attention. So that is the news coming through right now as we head live here on Hot Edition on 3FM 92.7. We're live in Parliament right now. And the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Sumana Kingsford Bagman, has just declared the four seats of the members of parliament as petitioned by the Honorable Harun Risu as vacant. So as it stands now, if this ruling is to go by, the NDC now has majority in this eighth parliament that is the consequential effect of the ruling of the speaker right now as you've just heard we're live in parliament right now here on hot edition on 3 fm 92.7 the suhum mp kojo sante seat has now been declared vacant for mana mp Andre Siamas seat declared vacant. Agona West MP Cynthia Morrison seat declared vacant. And the Memphis Central MP Kwachakas seat has also been declared vacant. That's three NPP MP seats declared vacant and one NDC MP seat declared vacant. And this eighth parliament has all been about the numbers and it keeps giving us a lot to think about. Prior to this ruling, the NDC had 137 of the seats and the NPP had 137 plus. Andrea Siama, the independent candidate doing business with them, which resulted in they having the majority in this 8th parliament, 138. Now, what's happened right now is that with three of these seats off, the NPP has effectively 135 of the seats in parliament plus the MP ndc also losing one seat 136 so that's how the numbers look right now uh, let's cross over again to parliament because the majority leader alexander penyo Markin, is on the floor right now mr speaker i do not come under any standing orders so you may resume your seat then mr speaker Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, you are, you are the father of this house. And Mr. Speaker, you, you, have, you have communicated to the house a position you've taken. It's been our practice 
that any time you have come out with a formal communication, you give opportunity to leadership to make a response. Mr. Speaker, if today you do not want me to talk, Mr. Speaker, that should be it. But Mr. Speaker, if you say that... Honourable Honour Honour Member, Honourable Member, you got it wrong. It's not the practice of the House that any time I come with a formal communication, I allow members to make comments. That's not the practice of the House. It's never been the practice of any of the houses that I have been member from 1993 to date. I have not had that as any practice of the House. Some speakers, including myself, may entertain some comments from members, but it is not a practice of the House. Mr. Speaker, if it pleases you, I would like to make some few comments on the matters you've raised. Because, Mr. Speaker, these are very grave matters. The matters you've raised are not light matters. They are very grave matters that I would want to comment. And, Mr. Speaker, So please, you want to seek my leave to make comments? That is so, respectfully. Now you agree it's not the practice, Mr. but Speaker, you are seeking my leave. Mr. Speaker, as it pleases you, with your leave? With your leave? Well, yes, you may do so. Mr. Speaker, thank you once again for the leave granted me to comment on your communication you just delivered. Mr. Speaker, you underscored your submissions with a very important point, that the matter that came before us has interpretation, interpretation reliefs, and that you do not have the power to interpret the Constitution, and that your duty is to enforce. Mr. Speaker. Honorable member, you are not listening to me. Mr. Speaker, may I finish with respect? All what you said are wrong, so Mr. I Speaker, cannot continue to allow Mr. you Speaker, to keep on misleading Mr. the House. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, please, if, if, if you think that this is your house and you didn't want us to talk, so be, Mr. Speaker, we should have Honorable to speak. Majority Leader, you are addressing the Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, you may, I need your protection. They must stop what they are doing. I am in charge. Mr. Speaker, then Anytime. they may be quiet. Please, please. Mr. Speaker, with respect, in your, in, your, in your ruling, my understanding was to the effect that your duty is not to interpret the Constitution. My understanding was to the effect that your duty is not to interpret the Constitution. But Mr. Speaker, it is important for me to emphasize one more time that when the statement was made by my respected colleague, Dr. Kesel Atufosa, I did draw the attention of the House, including your good self, to the fact that the matter being a very grave matter, I have taken it upon myself to seek the court's interpretation of the matter. Mr. Speaker, indeed. Mr. Speaker, I, I think I, I think I think Honourable I deserve members, some respect. Please, Mr. Speaker, let's I think I deserve other. some respect. Let's listen to each other. Please. No, no, I, I think I think it is only fair. Honourable Majority Leader, please address me. I'm taking care of that. Please Mr. let's Speaker, listen to each other. I did indicate that I have filed a process at the Supreme Court. And indeed, Mr. Speaker, the belief of the court had attempted to serve the process on the Director of Legal Affairs and the Director of Legal Affairs and the entire Legal Directorate refused service because, according to them, there was a circular stating that they can only be served on Mondays. I saw the circular myself. Subsequent to that, I asked, hearing the intention of Mr. Speaker to come to a determination in one way or the other, the directed service, which is within my rights, my 
Mr. Speaker, yesterday, yesterday, Parliament was duly served. Honorable Member, please, I didn't want to interrupt you, but you are the, the majority leader and the leader of this house. As at the time you were directing service yourself, you took the trouble of coming to parliament with two persons who alleged to be bailiffs and went to the legal office and went to the legal office to yourself directing officials of the legal office to receive the service. You are a member of parliament. I am the speaker. It is my duty to protect your privileges and immunities. In, the, in doing so, I had the discussion with the Chief Justice. And we came to an understanding that in the meantime, the Chief Justice will issue a directive as to how service of members of parliament, some officers of parliament, and the speaker could be effected. I communicated this to the House and discussed it with you, the leaders. We said that as we go along, we will together, parliament and the judiciary, particularly led by the Supreme Court, come out with a legislation on this issue of privileges and immunities of parliament, members of parliament, and specified officials of parliament. We discussed this. Based on this discussion, the Chief Justice issued a directive to all registries of courts in the country. And it is stated clearly there that the speaker can be served on Mondays during working hours. There were reasons why we came to those agreements. You are aware of it. Yet you kept on insisting that service be effected whilst the speaker was presiding over the proceedings of the House. You as leader of the House, as majority leader, you are saying that this was service because you threw the court processes on the table and walked away? Is that how you effect service? Please, to quote the common parlance, don't go there. Uh, with respect, for the past 12 years, I have accorded you every respect, and I'll continue to do that. No matter. Mr. Speaker, the fact you put out are not true. Mr. Speaker, these are credibility issues, so I will respond for the record. Mr. Speaker, somebody has told you something. Mr. Speaker, you reserve the right to be there to make your point. Let me make my point too. Mr. Speaker, no way. Mr. Speaker, no way. I will... Mr. Speaker, whoever told you, Mr. Speaker, whoever told you that I threw a paper at somebody, this has to do with my credibility. I will not allow her. No, Honourable Member, you don't listen at all. Mr. Speaker, I do. I never said Mr. you. Mr. Speaker, you said I, I never said, said you threw a paper at anybody. Mr. Speaker, I Mr. never Speaker, said that. That's exactly what you said. Let the answer check it. You Mr. See, Speaker, that is what you said. You are being carried away by your Mr. anger. Speaker, you are me, not I'm listening. Not, Mr. Speaker, I'm not angry. Honourable at all. Member, Honourable Member, Mr. Speaker, I'm not angry. I said the court process yes. was thrown on the table in the office. I never stated it was thrown by you at any person. Mr. Speaker, you said it, I allegedly said some, some bailiffs. Alleged I, I, bailiffs. I, I, Mr. No, 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 no. Mr. Speaker, no, no, no. then clarify. Mr. Please. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, with respect, listen to me. Mr. Speaker, listen. Honorable Majority Leader, I don't want to proceed to make some orders. Please, resume your seat. I'm very serious about that. Mr. Speaker, Mr. please resume your seat.
member, honorable member, your, your, your. We're still live here on Hot Edition on 3FM 92.7. We're monitoring right now what's happening in Parliament. We're live there right now. You'll hear the Honorable KT Hammond, uh, that Dancia Sokwa MP, beckoning the majority leader that they should walk out of the House. It appears that the majority in Parliament, well, until now, the NPP MPs in Parliament are beginning to consider the, the option of walking out of the House right now because effectively what's happened now is that the NDC have become the majority in Parliament. That is the consequential effect of the Speaker of Parliament's ruling today concerning the uh, petition to declare these four seats vacant. The Speaker's decision and the ruling is that indeed these four seats have been declared vacant. That is the former member of parliament, Andres Yama, seat declared vacant. Aguna West, Cynthia Morrison, seat declared vacant. Amefi Central MP, Kwachiaka, seat declared vacant. The Suhum MP, Kojo Asante, seat declared vacant. Now, four out of these four seats, three of them are MPs of the NPP. Now, the consequential effect of this ruling is that the NPP's majority has been reduced from 138 to 135. And the NDC's minority position now has become majority because it is only one of the MPs that is involved in this four. That is 136. So effectively, the numbers in this eighth parliament as it stands now by the ruling of the speaker, NDC 136. NPP 135. What that means is that the NDC has become the majority side in this 8th parliament. And so, here it, Dr. Kes Latoforsen, who is about addressing the House right now, has become effectively the majority leader of this 8th parliament. That is what is happening right now. That is the breaking news coming through right now from Parliament. We understand the, the, the NPP caucus or the NPP MPs in Parliament are beginning to walk out of Parliament right now. And that's what we're hearing. And uh, stay with us here on Hot Edition because we're going to cross over to Parliament. That's the breaking news coming through. Breaking news on 3FM 92.7. So that's the information right now here on Hot Edition on 3FM 92.7. Let's go over briefly to Parliament. Dr. Arshid Doman is joining us on the telephone. Let's hear from Parliament right now because uh, the uh, Dr. Kesla Toforsing, who uh, paired the consequential effect of this ruling by the Speaker today, has become the majority leader of this 8th Parliament, which never stops giving us a lot to talk about in this country, is addressing Parliament. Three FM nine to two point seven. We'll cross over there back to Parliament shortly. But uh, Dr. Rashid Raman is the director of the Africa Centre for Parliamentary Affairs. He's joining us on the telephone. Dr. Rashid Raman, good evening. Thank you for joining us here on Hot Edition. Good evening, Alfred. <laughs> two days ago, when we spoke, you gave an indication that this could possibly happen. Yes, indeed, it has happened now. And this eight Parliament never stops giving us a lot to talk about. Now, per the Speaker's ruling, the NDC has effectively become the majority in this eight Parliament, correct? Yes, that's what it is. I mean, until this ruling is overturned, uh, the NDC is majority now. But that's not the end of it, Alfred. I think there's more trouble to come. Because uh, now, apart from being the majority, they would also have the opportunity of um, electing somebody to be the second deputy speaker. Because the second deputy speaker is uh, part of this uh, casualty of four. And uh, as per the standing orders, 
the two deputy speakers have to come from different parties. So that might be another unintended consequence of the ruling uh, a while ago. So the NDC now will still have that opportunity to elect or select a second deputy speaker. Yes, that's what that's what uh, this means. Even though the Speaker of Parliament came from the NDC side. It, yes, because if you remember when Speaker Kui was from MPP, uh, the right Honourable Joe Sales was first deputy, and uh, Honourable Albambagbin at the time was second deputy. So you had two from MPP and then um, one from the other side. And I think that that is what it is because you cannot have, you cannot have the two deputy speakers coming from the same party. And because you have only one speaker, at least the standing orders couldn't say you can't have the speaker coming from two parties. Deputy speakers, there are two of them. And, and also bearing in mind what you made reference to that if this month or this ruling is not over 10, meaning that, yes, you do know what Alessandra Penyama King is seeking to do in the Supreme Court, the interpretation of Article 97.1, G yes. and H. Yes. Um, in fact, I think he's, he's uh, um, going to the court should have been after today once the Speaker makes his ruling. At least then now we know there's a substantive matter and then the court can interpret, give a judicial review whether the speaker erred or not. Um, but I mean, the previous uh, kind of injunction was trying to stop parliament from doing its work. And I think some of us said that's not, that's not right. If we go that route, Alfred, one day we we'll, we'll wake up and every single day, the court will tell Parliament, you can't do this, you can't do that, because somebody has come to court. And then Parliament will be completely paralyzed. And I think that that's, how we want, that's not how we want to build our democracy. <laughs> Dr. Arshidraman, hold on a bit for me. We're going to cross over back to Parliament right now. Uh, kindly hold on a bit for me. Briefly, uh, because the Speaker of Parliament is now addressing a matter that Dr. Kessler to Forsen spoke about. Six. Page seven. Page eight. Mr. Speaker, as I said, permit me to congratulate the NDC Majority Caucus. Mr. Speaker, from day one, from day one, we have not reneged on our responsibilities to work for the people of Ghana. Today is the beginning of the process to reset Ghana. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, our country has gone through a lot. We have always made our point, but unfortunately we've not been able to succeed because we're not having the working majority. But now we have the working majority. Yeah. Right, Honorable Speaker. Beginning the next parliamentary sitting, we'll begin the process to take over as the majority caucus of this parliament. And we thank you for the opportunity. Mr. Speaker, we have taken note, we have taken note of the fact that our colleagues, the minority caucus, the new minority caucus have just walked out. But that will not stop us from doing what is right for the people of Ghana. We will do what is right. But their conduct exactly reflects the work of a minority of the speaker we thank you very much for this ruling thank you mr speaker breaking news on free fm 92.7 Dr. Arshid Raman, so that's a confirmation. The, the NPP MPs have, have just walked out of Parliament after this decision was communicated by the Speaker, effectively declaring them the minority now in this eighth Parliament. 
<laughs> yeah, Alfred, this, as, you, as you rightly said, uh, I predicted right from the one, I think in your own studio, that this a parliament is going to give us a lot of surprises. And uh, I think that has been going on even up to these final days of of, uh, of the parliament. But I believe that that's not the end of it. I'm sure we are, we are going to see a lot of drama uh, in the coming days and weeks. Absolutely. I mean, even, even with the period when the NPP was in, was in the majority, we had a lot of drama to deal with. I mean, yeah. now we're going to have something that's historic, is it not? It's unprecedented, at least in yeah. this Fourth Republic, to have the <laughs> opposition controlling the legislative arm of government as a majority. I think that that's a sign of things to come. Uh, and I think for the benefit of the citizenry of this country, uh, who, whoever is in power uh, in the future, I think we would like to see uh, more of this. It forces their, their hand to move from their comfort zone to a zone of discomfort where they would have to negotiate and they would have to listen to each other. I think that that's what we have to try and do as Ghanaians. So that, I mean, in future, whoever forms the executive, if Ghanaians deliver a mandate where we have another party in parliament or parties that have to be forced to work together, uh, it can only inure to the benefit of, of the citizens of this country. Because uh, under this eighth parliament, I have learned a lot, particularly in terms of the powers that Parliament wields. I never knew Parliament had some of those powers. And it was simply because legislature after legislature, one party or the other had the majority and did not care about, you know, negotiating, did not care about compromise. And I'm speaking to both parties now. So I think it's only good for our democracy and uh, and I think it will also serve as a very important lesson to the political parties as we uh, grow our democracy. I think they should let the will of the people prevail at all times. I mean, if you... The parties are now being accused that they, they try to force candidates on constituencies. And that is the result of uh, what we are seeing. In the case of Honorable Asiyama, it was the same thing. And the MPP nearly lost the majority that they held for uh, three years plus. If Honorable Asiyama did not sympathize with his uh, roots and, and go back to the party and that matter on January 15th of 2021, the Speaker ruled that they were the majority caucus. So I think these are all lessons, I believe, for for the political parties as well. At all times, they should let the will of the people and not the will of any general secretary or any party chairman uh, be what uh, should happen in our various constituencies. And, and the fundamental issue that I pick, uh, which is crucial in everything you've said as well, is, is that what has happened today must adhere to the interest and benefit of, of the citizens, of the Ghanaian people. Indeed. It's, because now there's going to be a lot more negotiation and compromise mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the executive will not have or does not have the majority in parliament. And so when it comes to doing business, especially at this last moment to a yes. crucial election, there has to be compromise. Indeed. Indeed. So now anything that's coming to the House, I think uh, they would have to sit down and discuss with the other side. Um and even just as as uh, as late as today, I was part of a parliamentary conversation at the Kampinski Hotel, and I was saying, "Look, I think we need to really strengthen the hand of Parliament in terms of making sure that the interests of the people, the will of the people, is served, and we cannot just simply leave everything to the executive." Over the years, that has not served the interests of this country. And that can only happen if we have a divided government.
But this this ideal situation that you put it, that there has to be more compromise and negotiation, looking at the history of this eighth parliament, how easy or difficult is that going to be, especially for the MPP now? Because of some stance and position they have taken on, on matters in previous instances. Yeah, that's, that's the, the kind of precedent uh, that some of us have been have been uh, talking about. I think care has to be taken because you set certain precedents, and when minorities change, you have to live with those precedents, and then it becomes very difficult. And this event today is one good example. If you remember two days ago, the right honourable speaker said, you know, he was quoting the Bible: "No, oh, don't do unto others what you don't want others to do unto you." I think it's a simple law of nature. And so that is why, uh, you know, there's a famous senator from Hawaii. In, in, his, in his last address to the Congress, he said uh, something that was, I mean, very important. And he titled his, his final remarks as minorities change. And what did he say, Alfred? He said, when you are in the majority, make sure what you are putting pushing down the throat of a minority, uh, when the tables turn and you become the minority, it's medicine that you can also swallow. And I think these are, these are I think, important lessons for not only our parliament, but I think for all uh, I mean, developing country parliaments. Dr. Rashid Draman, I appreciate your time on this matter. And uh, we're going to continue conversation on this as always. So uh, we'll definitely come to you. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Dr. Rashid Draman, Executive Director of the Africa Center for Parliamentary Affairs. Let's stay the same on this matter. If you're just joining us here on Hot Edition on 3FM 92.7, also on Kiss Me 107.1 in Tamale and beyond, on W93.5 in Wa and beyond, the National Democratic Congress NDC caucus in Parliament have just been declared the majority of this eighth parliament. They are now the majority side with the consequential effect of the ruling of the Speaker on the petition to have some four seats declared vacant because those members of parliament, three of the of the four have decided to contest as independent candidates in this 2024 election and one that is the second deputy speaker of parliament the former mp who is an independent candidate has decided to contest on the ticket of the npp in the upcoming election so that's the consequential effect now the ndc has 136 of the seats in parliament now they have effectively lost the amenfi central seat which is still being held by Kwachiaka, who has decided to go independent. And then also the MPP has effectively lost the Suhum seat occupied by Kojo Asante, the Fomena seat occupied by Andre Siama, and the Agona West seat occupied by Cynthia Morrison. So they have now dropped from 138 to 135, as against the NDC losing one seat effectively by this ruling reducing their numbers from 137 to 136 so that's the makeup and the look and the representation of parliament in this eighth parliament right now this eighth parliament certainly continues to give and give us a lot to talk about with respect to our parliamentary role and also a parliamentary democracy as a country. Uh, Dr. Samuel Freer is a political analyst. He's been watching this quite closely. Dr. Freer, thank you for joining us here on Hot Edition. Yes, um, thank you and your, uh, thank you and which is your cherished um, listeners as well. Based on what has been happening over the last few days, did, did, did this surprise you? Um, I would say yes and no. And looking at the dynamics of Parliament, uh, this uh, um, eighth Parliament is so interesting, and the, the, the dynamics is, is, is telling us how things are evolving. And this is a good time for us to see how uh, parliamentary democracy is working, when especially when the House is divided into various, um, that is, equal numbers. And that is very, very interesting, and it's helpful to Ghana democracy. Um, and that is um, what we are we are learning of late, and that is very very good. So that um, it will help all of us into the future how we can um, um, learn from um, these these um, developments. That is very interesting, 
and the ruling that the the speaker made it today just a few minutes ago it, it just just give an indication of how uh, parliamentary democracy is, is evolving in our country and i believe that um i think the 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 the, 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 the this ruling uh, has to be triggered by the minority the current minority group for for the house to decide how who, who constitute the ma- majority and then the minority as well and also i think the the um the the majority currently also also have to uh, strategize to see how they can uh, collaborate with the, the the new stage or the new life of uh, parliament for some few months that is ahead of us I see. Now, there's that expectation that because of this development, the N- the NDC now being majority, the MPP would have to, you know, compromise and then also seek some level of negotiation. But hold on a bit for me. Let's cross over now to Parliament because Alexander Fenyo Markin, um, who leads the NPP caucus in Parliament, is talking to the press. All right. Okay. 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 We'll hear from him shortly here on Hot Edition on 3FM 92.7. But is it is it one that's going to be easy for the lack of better expression, especially because of the precedence of happenings in this eighth parliament, Dr. Freire, that the NPP now would have to come to terms with the fact that we are no more majority, we are minority, and we would have to negotiate with our NDC partners or MPs. Yeah, yeah. I think I think you said so. You said so. So the only option is that sometimes you get to certain um, 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 level and you realize that you can't do anything. The only way is to negotiate and also compromise it as such and also try to engage more for issues to be addressed because at the end of the day you are in government and if you want to ensure that your your policies and your issues are being um, um, at least uh, being stand in parliament then you need to compromise now and also engage more negotiate as such if not then that would be very very detrimental to the government of the day so i think that is how and that shows the future that one day one day we may also have a parliament that is an opposition and also the government the ruling government also from a different party and that could have been a, 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 something that will be so interesting i think this staging a, a, a plan for the near future as one day we will now have a parliament for one stamp or for let us say for a government of the day and also having that majority it, it's, a, it's an interesting situation that is happening nowadays and, and i think it will all go well for our future democracy I mean, and take a look at this as well. Now, apart from the NDC becoming majority, the second deputy speaker position is also effectively declared vacant. And so the NDC would also have the opportunity to now elect someone to occupy that position of second deputy speaker of parliament as well. Yes, that is why I said that um, I think the next sitting, the, the, the current minority needs to evoke their, their, their uh, procedures to um, have these things change. And that is what will set the tone, so that they will have their, their speaker as, as, as it has been always been the practice in parliamentary democracy. And that is that is the order of the day for the next week, if, if they resume. I think they have to invoke it, because now the ruling has come, and then the, 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 the processes of trying to elect and change some of these. Because these changes will affect a lot of um, committees as well, within parliament where automatically when one is, is in majority you have to take rule of certain um, um, committees automatically and it will it will just change parliament within the shortest possible time and that will be so interesting uh, ahead dr free i appreciate your time on this matter thank you thank you so My much thank you. dr samuel Fier is a political analyst joining us here on hot edition now let's hear from uh the mp4 zoma drejri a frank Anodombre, who was until this this moment the majority chief whip what the ruling of the speaker means essentially is that he has now become the minority chief whip and then also the the leader of the mpp caucus in parliament alexander fenyamakin as well who spoke to the media let's take a listen to them you, um, the communication that just came from the, the speaker so may we listen to the majority Our issues all right so we've just witnessed a conspiracy between the speaker 
and the minority to bring confusion in the house. It is clear that Mr. Speaker avoided service of the writs to do the bidding of the NDC. It's so clear, but we believe in the law. We, as the majority caucus, immediately, immediately, are boycotting Parliament until this matter is determined by the Supreme Court. The, 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 the Speaker has no right to interpret the Constitution and it is so clear that what he did was to give advantage to the NDC and do the bidding of the NDC. We are not going to go further to litigate. We have a process at the court. We will follow it up. If the court makes a pronouncement, we will respect the orders of the court. But because we believe that the issues we have raised are issues for interpretation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Breaking news on 3FM 92.7. So that's Alessandra Fenyo Markin, the photo member of parliament. You also had uh, and so on, Andre J, member of parliament, Frank Anodon Pre, there. If you're just joining us here on Hot Edition 6 p.m., the NDC had the ruling of the speaker on the petition to have some four seats declared vacant have effectively become the majority in this eighth parliament with the NPP now becoming the minority with 135 seats as against the NDC with 136 seats. That is the composition of this eighth parliament now. Stay with us. There's a lot more coming up here on Hot Edition. After this quick break, Juliana Menua for standing by with the latest in the world of business. The most comprehensive election coverage. Top notch presenters and well versed analysts. Dedicated reporters and correspondents in every nook and cranny across the country. All the action, every incident reported, all the big stories covered, all facts questioned, every figure verified. Monitored and accounted for. The numbers tallied, analyzed, and interpreted. We have invested time and energy in order to bring you a comprehensive elections coverage. The whole world will be watching us on TV, online, and radio. Election Command Center. Facts, analysis, results. gets busy on this frequency 92.7 3fm 3 3 3 fm Good evening and welcome to the business segment on Hort's edition. Coming up tonight, Ghana's industrial production records 8.2% growth in second quarter of 2024, driven by strong gains in manufacturing and mining. We'll bring you details of the latest Ghana Statistical Service Production Price Index. My name is Menu Afo. Do stay tuned. Now the details, Ghana's industrial sector experienced a robust 8.2% year-on-year growth in the second quarter of 2024. That's according to the latest data from the Ghana Statistical Service. The increase, driven by significant performance in manufacturing and mining, contrasts with declines in the electricity and gas subsector. The following news desk report has details. Ghana's industrial production has recorded a notable year-on-year -year growth 
of 8.2% for the second quarter of 2024. This increase, according to the Ghana Statistical Service, was largely driven by the manufacturing and mining subsectors, which posted growth rates of 8.3% and 9.2% respectively. Key contributors included a 20.9% rise in the production of transport equipment within the manufacturing sector. However, not all sectors performed positively. The electricity and gas subsector saw a decline of 1.4% year-on-year and a more significant 4.3% drop quarter-on-quarter. Quarter. Despite these challenges, the water supply, sewage and waste management sector saw a modest 1.2% increase, highlighting growth across various industrial activities in the country. And that was a three business news report on Ghana's industrial production recording 8.2% growth in the second quarter of 2024, driven by strong gains in manufacturing and mining. Now on to our stories, Executive Secretary of the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers Ghana, Duncan Amwa, has emphasized the need for oil marketing companies to enhance monitoring of service stations and ensure the operational efficiency of fuel pumps. His comments follow a recent incident involving an alleged tampered dispenser at a Goyle service station in Atimpoku, which gained significant attention on social media. He urged that pumps are tested at least twice a day by stations to avoid surprises which may likely dent the brand. The OMCs I have cautioned, and in fact I, I will still continue to engage them. Don't put station managers, they only come and sit and probably watch cars and sell. When they come, they should also take, I mean, their morning readings, their afternoon or evening readings, to be sure at all material time that their machines are working the way they should. So the OMCs will need to be firm on their employees or workers, so that if there is a misreading, you, the OMC, would even be aware before the consumer comes and get an issue with whatever you are serving them. So they would also have a role to play here to ensure that they tighten uh, they are monitoring and ensure that if there are challenges, they are even the first to tell that their pumps are not reading the way they should. So that you can be reading these reports. Where you feel you need to go and change the pumps, go and change them. Because if you don't, people will put you on social media and your brand uh, comes under attack needlessly. You heard the voice of Executive Secretary of the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers Ghana, Duncan Amwa, urging OMCs to prioritize efficiency of their pumps. Now, former Energy Minister and Deputy Minority Leader in Parliament, Emmanuel Kofi Boa, has re reiterated the next NDC government's commitment of reviewing the operations of the Ghana National Petroleum Corporation to ensure it focuses on its core mandate. According to him, even though GNPC was set up, set up to aid in oil exploration and production, it has veered off its responsibility. Speaking at an energy policy town hall organized by the Chamber of Bulk Oil Distributors in Accra, Emmanuel Kofibwa also reviewed plans to review oil revenue allocation given to the entity. The National Oil Company's goal was to basically lead Ghana into discovering oil instead of all these foreign companies coming in. Exactly where are they now in terms of that goal? As GMPC built its capacity to the extent that we can now say that instead of giving this oil block to here and now, the GMPC just go and take it to the war pit. So Ghana, instead of getting 10%, 50% here, can now say that our national oil company is the one leading the charge. So this oil that we are producing is ours 100%. That is really the challenge for us. Having built and produced water here and there, that's great. <laughs> But that is not why we are giving GMPC a chunk of the oil money for Parliament. In fact, what we are going to do is to review the allocations of the uh, money that we are giving them to the Petroleum Revenue Management Act to make sure we can really focus their attention in building the capacity to make sure that GMPC will lead us in discovering oil. I think that's very critical, and we'll do that. That was former Energy Minister and Deputy Minority, Minority Leader in Parliament, Emmanuel Kofi Boathe. That's it for the business segment on Hot Edition. For more stories, can you log on to our website? It's www.3news.com. My name is Menu Afo. Do stay tuned. Sports News is up next.
Hello there, good evening and welcome to the sports segment here on the 3FM Hot Edition. My name is Bill Ishen. And coming in recently, Otoado has been speaking uh, days after losing by two goals to nil to Sudan in the AFCON 2025 qualifiers. Now, in his first statement, he did mention uh, that he congratulates or appreciates the job that has been done by James Kwesiapia and the Sudanese national team. And he also adds that he has mathematically a chance to qualify for the AFCON 2025. Okay, first of all, um, I would like to congratulate uh, Sudan for their victory. Um, um, and also the coach, Kwasi Apia, um, always been a gentleman before and after the game. Um, they did well. They showed uh, passion in their match. And um, I would like to congratulate them for this. Then surely um, I want to thank the, the, the team for at least trying, knowing that it was not good enough. I think we had a good talk afterwards. I had individual talks with players um, where we attacked certain issues and certain scenes. And um, I hope it was fruitable. Um, everybody was down and it um, was a really, really hard pill to, to, to take. Um, surely I want to use the opportunity also to thank the whole technical staff for supporting me. Even now, after the game, in our worst days. Otoado basically thanking his technical staff. But what does he think about Ghana's chances in AFCON 2025 uh, qualifiers? Currently, Ghana have just two points in Group F in the qualification and need to win their final two games and hope that Sudan lose both games for them to secure qualification to the AFCON for the 11th straight time. And this is what he had to say on that. Yet, mathematically, there's still a chance and we will do everything which is in our hands to, to, to hold this chance alive. And reflections on the game, you know, it's like, and I, I think I need to go a little bit, not only on this game, but a little bit more behind. If I reflect, um, and this is, I mean, has, was also when I was a player, this was the case, you have to win your uh, home games. You have to win them. And, um, you know, the, the, the passion and the, also the discipline defensively, and, but also offensively, position-wise, was, was really, really good. It's just like we didn't execute and the results were not there. And, um, but surely we deserved to win against Angola and also like the last home game against Sudan. I Basically, Otuad was saying that Ghana should have won their home games in the AFCON 2025 qualifiers. In November, they have their final two games. Uh, that will be a home game against Niger and an away game against Angola, who have already qualified for the main tournament. But moving on, earlier today, Mohamed Kudus released an apology statement, uh, basically apologizing for the Black Stars' performances uh, in the recent qualifying matches against Sudan. And this is what he said in his statement. Uh, on behalf of the entire team, I would like to extend our sincerest apologies to the people of Ghana for our recent performances against Sudan in Accra and Libya. We want to assure Ghanaians that we are committed to learning from our mistakes, regrouping and working tirelessly to restore the Black Stars to our former glory. And my colleague Oreo Kwampofu believes that this was the best statement to make at this particular point in time. Bear in mind that Mohamed Kudus is not substantive captain yet. And so this is just captaincy for the last two games. And so he didn't have to actually release the statement. And so I think that one, it was necessary. Two, the timing was great. And it came with a lot more weight because at that point, the FA ministry, nobody had released a statement. So Kudus's statement became the first voice, uh, a point for fans to be able to hear something from anything from the football fraternity. And I think the choice of words were good. If you're looking at the reactions from Instagram, uh, there was Majid Ashimeru, Mumin, uh, Kamal Dean, Suleimana, Fatau Isaku, a host of players who quickly commented and shared on their Instagram story, which suggests that 
I think they knew about it or had an idea about the statement. If you look at how quickly they all reacted to the post, even players, uh, including Michael Bedou and Abdul Samed, who's not part of the squad currently, and Abdul Hakim, Arafat, young players who are even yet to play in the national team colors, were all sharing um, you know, this post on Instagram as well. So it does once again highlight the influence that he has in camp. And I think it validates Otoado's choice of making him captain at least for these two games. That was my colleague Oreko Ampofo on Mohamed Kudus' statement that was released earlier today. Good news for Ghana and Southampton because uh, we have Kamal Dean Suleimana who has been passed fit after a long period of injury. The 22-year-old could feature in the Premier League this weekend against Leicester City. Their head coach, uh, that is uh, Russell Martin, says Kamal Dean is fit now to be in the squad with Smallbone. Is also back with the squad, so a couple of positives for us. That is according to the head coach of Southampton. So we do expect Kamal Dean Sulemana to return uh, to Premier League football. But moving on to the local scene, the biggest match that is coming up this weekend is between Asante Kotoko and FC Samatex in round seven of the competition. And the head coach of Samatex, Amadou Nuruddin, has been speaking ahead of that big clash. Uh, certainly it's a big game and I think that this season they are doing well and so we expect a very very tough and difficult encounter. But that notwithstanding we are also ready uh, to give them a good match and then uh, uh, we'll see how it goes. We we, we battle with some few outstanding matches now we have cleared and so we see that we have some uh, uh, rest period as going forward because there will not be any midweek and so I think that we are ready it's going to be difficult they have made a lot of signings they have started well and so we'll see how it goes we will indeed see how it goes. That is according to Amadou Nuruddin, the head coach of Samatex, who are currently uh, the holders of the Ghana Premier League trophy. Asante Kotoko's head coach, Prosper Ogumo, also responded to this. He believes that Samatex is a good side and will be tough to beat. I think Samatex is, is a very good side, very structured side, um, tactically in terms of the arrangement on the fold. Uh, you see that. Uh, they have a structure and they have a style within the structure. So when you are playing them, you also have to be extra above them to be able to, to get a maximum point. So um, they are a good side. We've, we've observed them, uh, even though they are one match uh, ahead of us, I don't think in terms of match fitness, uh, the difference will be too huge. So I believe that we just have to be confident we have to be very determined and then we have to be very composed believe that we also have a structure that will play within the structure and then go after them that was head coach of asante kotoko dr prosper nati ogum speaking ahead of that big clash that is coming up against fc samatex but before i do go uh, there's something that is coming from the camp of england Wayne Rooney, who is an England legend, has been expressing his surprise at the appointment of Thomas Tuchel as England's head coach. Uh, earlier this week, Thomas Tuchel was announced as the head coach of England's national team, signing an 18-month contract after uh, the sacking of Gareth Southgate. Now, he's expected to start his job on January 1st, 2024. And Rooney... Uh, said in his statement to BBC that I think he's a very good coach but surprised that Effie have employed him. That was Wayne Rooney on the appointment of Thomas Tuchel who is a former coach of Chelsea and a Champions League winner. That's it for the sports segment here on the 3FM Hot Edition. My name is Bill Ishen, Alfred and the rest of the team are on standby with a lot more. most comprehensive election coverage. Top 
top-notch presenters and well-versed analysts. The most comprehensive election coverage. Top-notch presenters and well-versed analysts. Dedicated reporters and correspondents in every nook and cranny across the country. All the action, every incident reported, all the big stories covered, all facts cross-checked, every figure verified. Every vote monitored and accounted for. The numbers tallied, analyzed and interpreted. We have invested time and energy in order to bring you a comprehensive elections coverage. The whole world will be watching us on TV, online and radio. Election Command Center. Facts. Analysis. Results. 3FM. And so, what is my role in all this? Under women members, it is important to point out that the speaker is called upon by the standing orders of parliament, particularly order 18, to inform the house of the occurrence of a vacancy of the seat of a member under clause 1B to E, G and H of article 97 of the constitution. Well, that's the Speaker of Parliament right there, Alban Sumana, Kingsford Bagman, here on Hot Edition on 3FM 92.7. Live on Kiss Me 107.1 in Tamale and beyond, and also on W93.5 in Wa and beyond, also in the Eastern and also the Ashanti region. You can listen to us right now. And let's go on to the telephone. The Honorable Davis and Sopoko is a member of Parliament for the Impraeso constituency. is joining us right now. Appreciate your time. Uh, Honorable Davis and Sopoko, good evening to you. Good evening, my friend. How are you? I'm well, thank you. And I'm sure that the, the NPP caucus in Parliament is, is not happy, I, I guess, about this ruling by the Speaker well, on this petition. Well, to say that we are not happy um, will be an understatement. Um, we are extremely shocked and a bit surprised by the constitution of our land. Um, clearly, it's not uh, finding its way to the very body that needs to protect it. But that's it. I mean, that is the beauty of the rule of law. That's the beauty of democracy. And uh, it's important that we look forward to uh, correcting it. I mean, there are, there are, there are, there are, there are, not body that, that um, could correct this. And um, as a court, we are considering various possibilities. I'm sure that at a proper time, we'll get back to you on this. I say, if you say correcting it, or you're, you're, you're going to the courts? Well, of course. I mean, uh, we, we have we have the Supreme Court to, which is closed with the powers exclusively to interpret um, uh, the constitution of the land. Because, I mean, there are case laws that go to affirm that the constitution of the land is supreme. And um, article, the right article that we, we, we talk about, for me, I mean, it, it, it's quite limited to a uh, you, you cannot look into the future and begin to punish people for a decision that they want to take in the future. Currently, there are members of parliament belonging to a particular side, and they have the intent to represent their constituency in the next parliament as independent or as belonging to the NPP. Right. That for me should, 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 should not be a business. We should, we should not be too bothered about it. What we should be bothered about is to ensure that they truly represent their constituents. For instance, if Peter Aka were to come to the chamber and tell the speaker that Mr. Speaker, from henceforth, I no longer want to side with the NDC or the minority in parliament. Yes, then it breached uh, the constitution of our land. In this case, by mere fact that the intent to contest in the next parliament 
as an independent candidate. For me, we should not punish the good people of Amin too. We should not punish the member of parliament for its intention to contest, to appear in the next parliament as an independent. It, it infringes upon Article 21 of our constitution that promotes or that talks about freedom of association. But in, in that I same mean, spirit, the former MP, yeah. the former MP, yeah. prior to the 2020 yeah. elections, was punished yeah. by your party for his intention it to contest. Uh, it, it was wrong then, it is wrong today, it will be wrong in the future. So you're saying that Speaker Michael Quay was wrong to have admitted well, that... I, I've, I've said it the whole day, that Professor Michael Quay was wrong. Um, I have heard this argument that he gave the member of parliament in question an opportunity to respond. But I think that we have not gotten there. Uh, Professor Okwe was not clothed with the powers to dismiss a member of parliament by mere fact that he intended. He intended. So essentially. We try and lock members of parliament into. Uh, 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 a position where uh, they take a decision or their, their stance cannot, can never be changed. That, for me, is a wrong precedent that is being set. Well, but that's been the, the premise and the precedence for this decision as we speak today. And, and the speaker was quite clear in reading his ruling that based on yeah. the, the interpretation of Article 97, G and, and H, effectively, these persons, with the decision they have taken, have not shown respect to their constituents and, as a result, lack the capacity to represent them in this house. I don't think so. What if, what if these persons have lost their, their, their election? So some of them must have been, they lose their election. And they decide that in the election of 2032, they want to represent their constituents as independent. Would they still be punished? No. You cannot punish them for a decision that they want to take in the future. But that would mean that they've, they've lost an election. <laughs> Obviously, that, that one, no, they have their right to take a decision because but, they are not but, serving but, but, members but, of parliament. Those are two different situations. You see, in the, in the spirit of representation and in the heart of our democracy, Whatever we do as members of parliament, whatever we do as president, whatever we do as executive, whatever we do as a judiciary, it is because the people, the Ghanaian people, the people who sealed some five hours, some six hours just to cut their ballots, have given us a certain mandate to represent them. To represent them in what regard? So they represent them in the eighth parliament a member of parliament belonging to the NPP side. That has not changed for Peter Aka. That has not changed for Cynthia Morrison. That has not changed for anybody. Now, what they intend doing is that they want to now go and present themselves to their constituents. That in the ninth parliament, I want to represent you as an independent member of parliament. It is up to their constituents to decide, not anybody else. Not anybody else. Is that to their constituents to decide? Unfortunately, but this has happened. And like I said, the caucus would, 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 come, up, would come out with our, our, our directives as soon as possible. We'll be monitoring the coming days and how things will look like now. Sure, so sure, would, sure, would sure, you continue sure. attending to the business of the house after today as you've, you've worked out? Well, let, let, let the leadership of the caucus decide. I will get back to you. Thank you very much for joining us. Welcome. That is a member of parliament, the NPP NP for the Impriaso constituency, Davis Opoku Ansadea. You heard it right here on Hot Edition on 3FM 92.7. He says, even though he's NPP MP, he disagrees with Speaker Michael Quay for setting that precedence of declaring the Fomena seat vacant. We understand that after the NPP caucus walked out of Parliament few minutes ago, 
they are yet to take a decision on whether or not they will continue attending to the business of the house or their boycott will be as long as forever that is another matter as well remember this is the last sitting of this eighth parliament this is the last when they, they this parliament adjourns they're going to go for the elections on december 7 when they reconvene it would be the dissolution of this eighth parliament this eighth parliament started with a lot to talk about and it is ending with a lot to talk about the eighth parliament of the fourth republic would be a matter a topic for conversation for a long long time to come i want to say thank you so much for joining us here on hot edition on 3fm 92.7 Live on Kiss Me 107.1 in Tamale and beyond, and on W93.5 in Wa and beyond. On behalf of the rest of the team, we do appreciate your company. I am Alfred Okanse. Join me at 10 p.m. for a lot more of this. This conversation about the development in Parliament, plus more, on TV3. 10 p.m. for Ghana tonight. Alfred Akansi. Have a great evening.